I don't believe love is just doing the right thing. I don't believe love is just keeping commandments, and I don't believe love is just being patient and kind. And That's what love looks like when it walks and talks, but that's not love. Love is passion. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a passion for God? Do you desire Him? Do you long for Him? Yes, we all go through times in which our hearts are dull. Yes, we go through times when we need to be encouraged. Yes, we all go through times when our eyes are mesmerized by things they should not be. Yes, we all struggle in that. But if someone were to look at your life, would they say, this person has a passion, not for ministry, not for missions, not for evangelism, but for God. That the sign of a genuine work of God in the heart is that you begin to hate the sin you once loved and to love the righteousness you once ignored. The question is not, do you agree with that or are you challenged? The question is, is that a reality in your life? Is it? Young, young lady, young man, elderly woman, elderly man, middle-aged man in the prime of life, is it a reality in your life? Are you continuing to grow in your hatred of sin and your love for righteousness? That's the question. So it's not a question of do you want to do the right thing or do you want to be moral or do you want to have a good life? It is this, do you desire Him? I hate preaching that goes something like this. You know, you got a wonderful life there, yuppie. You got a really nice house and a really nice job and you've got a really beautiful wife and you've got 1.25 children and, and you've got three cars and Subarus and Suburbans and you're just, you got a great job. You got a great life. Everything fits perfectly in place. You just lack one thing. You lack Jesus. That is the most disgusting thing you could ever say. What would be more appropriate to say is, Sir, your life is nothing. It has no value at all apart from Jesus Christ. He is not some little accessory that a yuppie puts on top of his life as though it were cherry on the top of ice cream. You have Jesus and Jesus has you or you are barren and wasted and lost. So it's not a question of do you want a better life? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to fix your marriage? Do you want all these things? No, do you want God? Do you desire Him? Everyone knows they're a sinner. They just don't realize how heinous and terrible that is. Nor do they want to let go of the very thing that they choose to drink down as though it were water. So you see, the question is not, do you recognize you're a sinner? The question is, sir, as I have been speaking to you, or maybe it's long-term discipleship over a period of time, sir, as I've been sharing with you and discipling you, what has God done to your heart? People come to me all the time and they say, I have a new relationship with God. And I say, well, do you have a new relationship with sin? Because if you don't have a new relationship with sin, you don't have a new relationship with God. Has God done such a supernatural work in your heart through the Holy Spirit that although prior to that you have lived a life of ignoring God, of hating God, you now see Him as esteemed above all things. And you desire Him above all things. God is infinite. Heaven will be an infinite chase, an infinite tracking down of the glories of God.
But most don't want that. Even most who t attend the evangelical churches don't really want that, and I can prove it. They don't want it now. If you don't want it now, you won't want it then. Because eternal life does not begin with dying and going to heaven. He says, this is eternal life, that they may know you. Know you. And that begins the moment He regenerates your heart and reveals to you God. This place ought to be a contradiction. First Baptist Church of Muscle Shoals ought to be a contradiction in every sense of the term. Our theology should be high, even it should be called academic and to some degree. People should think that the only thing we think about is theology and truth, and yet when the worship leader gets up here, this place ought to go wild. Do you desire Him?